Hello everybody, in chapter 6 we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and starting a small business. So we've kind of touched about on entrepreneurship a little bit and starting a business. Um, we're just going to kind of dive deeper um, into both of those subjects here in chapter 6. So uh, what we're going to be talking about is just the job creating power of entrepreneurs in the United States, why people take the entrepreneurial challenge, uh, getting started in small business, learning about small business operations, uh, managing a small business, and then going global uh, from a small business standpoint. So entrepreneurship, as we know, um, accepting the risk of starting and running a business. Uh, some no notable entrepreneurs here. So uh, French immigrant, I'm not even going to try that name, uh, DuPont. Um, he's the one who started DuPont in 1802. DuPont now is, uh, you know, a very large chemical company. Um, you know, they do a lot with paint and everything. Um, David McConnell borrowed $500 from a friend to start Avon. George Eastman started Kodak with $3,000 investment in 1880, and then Jeff Bezos started Amazon.com with investments from his family and friends. Um, this list could go on and on with different types of, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, but these are just, you know, a couple of quick examples. So, uh, you're never too young to be an entrepreneur, so five reasons to start your business right away. Um, you know, if you are young, you don't have a mortgage or the kids to take care of, that's a great opportunity. Uh, you can survive on little funds or work long hours, uh, no disruption um, to your career path, it hasn't started yet. Um, you have more energy and enthusiasm, so in, if you succeed, you'll have long-term financial gains. So, I would say, you know, if you have an <clears throat> idea early on in life, uh, I mean, try to pursue it as much as possible. Um, just because, I mean, all these factors you got going again or going for you. Um, and as you get older, um, a lot of times it is oftentimes harder to get away, uh, you know, from a career if you're wanting to kind of go on out on your own, just because you do have obligations such as you know a family to take care of. Um, you're also never too old to be an entrepreneur either. Um, the highest rate of entrepreneur activity is 55 to 64 age group. Um, you know, when you look at the age group, those are typically the individuals who are probably getting ready to retire or just retired. So they got a little bit of free time on their hand. They're looking for that second career, so to speak. So uh, since 1996, old Americans have opened businesses at a higher rate than 20 to 34 year olds. Um, and older entrepreneurs have a greater experience and more financial resources just because they've been able to save up their entire lives. Um, and, you know, they can rely on their experience that they had, you know, at their previous career. Hmm. So why people take the entrepreneurial challenge, um, you know, opportunity, we've talked about this, I mean, just your uh, opportunity to go out on your own, be your own boss, uh, profit, you can pretty much make as much as you want, you can make as little as you want, it just kind of goes on, you know, whatever you're kind of feeling, independence, like I said, you are your own boss, um, and then just the challenges, just waking up every day, uh, you know, starting your own business, seeing it through, uh, and people really just love that challenge and to strive for it. So big time profit from becoming an entrepreneur. So if you look at Ralph Lauren, um, he could outfit all of Martha Vineyard uh, with new clothing. Um, Dietrich uh, Moschitz uh, could buy himself a can of Red Bull every day for the next 11 million years. Um, and then Lil, was it Lillian uh, Betancourt uh, could buy a box of L'Oreal hair color for every woman in the world. So uh, these individuals obviously be very successful in what they were able to do. Um, they have a lot of profits and they're able to you know kind of spread around. And these are just a couple of examples of what they could do with those profits. So what does it take to be an entrepreneur? Um, you know, self-directed, uh, self-nurturing, action-oriented, highly energetic, uh, tolerant of uncertainty. I would say you definitely do be. <clears throat> Um, you know, self-motivated, uh, you know, intrinsically motivated. You're probably not doing it just for the money. You're doing it just for, you know, um, your own personal challenge that you have in your mind um, and just getting up every day um, and trying to create something new, especially, you know, uh, you know, highly energetic definitely plays a role into that where, uh, you know, if you're getting up every day, you're ready to take on the world, that's definitely going to be, uh, you know, a good attribute to have uh, in being an entrepreneur. So five tips for starting your business um, in school. Um, so like we've talked about in the past, so fi find a problem or a need, uh, prioritize it, uh, do some research on campus, test products with students, um, you know, ask your friends about it, you know, find startup funds, and then sacrifice. Uh, you know, a really good example is, you know, Facebook. Um, 
<clears throat> Most of you have probably seen The Social Network, if not, really good movie about Facebook and how it kind of got its start. Um, so, I mean, finding a problem and a need, kind of Mark Zuckerberg, um, you know, was kind of looking around. They had a couple of, you know, social media platforms at Harvard, but he thought he could build a better one. Um, so he prioritized kind of what he was looking for out of a social media uh, network, uh, created it, um, did some research on campus, uh, tested products. Um, you know, the movie kind of portrays, you know, what he was doing versus kind of what the Winklevoss twins were doing. Uh, you know, it's hard to say exactly kind of what was going on behind the scenes. Um, but he was doing research um, on his own and kind of creating his own thing. Um, <clears throat> finding startup funds. I mean, he went to his friend. Uh, his friend had some funds to kind of help him along. He got going with it, and then obviously sacrifice was a huge deal for him uh, just because I mean, he sacrificed you know, quite a few friendships along the way uh, to kind of get where he was going. <clears throat> Turn your passion and problems into opportunities. Uh, so any idea is a good opportunity if um, it fills a customer needs. Uh, you have the skills and resources to start a business. Uh, you can sell the product or service at a reasonable price and still make a profit. Um, you can get your product or service to customers before their window opportunity closes, and then you can keep the business going. So entrepreneurial teams, um, that's just a group of experienced people from different areas of business who join to form a managerial team with the skills to develop, um, make, and market a new product. So an entrepreneurial team, um, you know, such as Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and uh, Mark, uh, Mike Markula uh, was the key to Apple's success. <clears throat> A lot of the times an entrepreneurial team will kind of be formed by somebody who has an idea. And then if you have, uh, you know, capital investors around you who have, you know, a lot of money uh, to kind of throw at the project, um, they're also on board and willing to, you know, help you out in creating, um, you know, your service or your product, that sort of thing. And then they can help you um, in your team. So, um we have entrepreneurs, and then we also have intrapreneurs. So these are just creative people who work as entrepreneurs within corporations. Uh, intrapreneurs use a company's existing resources to launch new products for a company. I'd say a classic example of this is Google. Um, Google has a lot of entrepreneurs who are creating things within Google um, to you know build Google to be a bigger company, or rather Alphabet now. Another example of that is 3M. So they're the maker of Post-it notes. Uh, they encourages entrepreneurship among its employees by requiring them to devote at least 15% of their time to think about new products. So how is this commitment to innovation paid off for 3M and its employees? So it seems like every time you turn around, 3M is coming out with some sort of new idea. I mean, they do have... <clears throat> Uh, Post-its, um, I mean, they do have a lot of like different adhesive products um, and just overall home goods. I mean, you look around and 3M is a very diverse company, so uh, that's hel helped them to expand um, on what they originally were. So micropreneurs um, are entrepreneurs willing to accept the risk of starting to manage in a business that remains small. Um, it lets them uh, do the work they want to do and offers them a balanced lifestyle. So about, <clears throat> excuse me, about half of the U.S. micropreneurs are home-based businesses owners. Um, so examples of that would be writers, consultants, video producers, architects, bookkeepers, etc. So these are people who have, you know, uh, a very, you know, um, specialized skill set, um, and they kind of, you know, almost work for, uh, you know, kind of a contract hire. So uh, nearly 60% of home-based micropreneurs are men. Um, so, um, you know, with micropreneurs and home-based businesses, uh, you do have computer technology has leveled the playing field on that. Um, you have corporate downsizing has led to many uh, to venture on their own. Social attitudes have changed, and then new tax laws have loosened restrictions uh, on deducting expenses uh, for home offices. So um, I have a friend. He works um, from home. He is a computer programmer, uh, does a lot of contract work, building websites, different things along those lines, and does pretty well at it. So uh, that's becoming kind of the new norm these days where a lot of people are working from home and doing kind of contract work, whether it is um, you know, through website building or like in the last slide we were talking about like you know, architects, writers, consultants, anything like that. So some of the challenges of working at home, um, these are probably some of the same challenges that you experience just by doing an online course at home. Um, so 
uh, you know, getting new customers is difficult. Obviously, if you're sitting at home, kind of hard to reach out. Uh, just managing your time requires self-discipline. That definitely relates to an online course. Just trying to set aside some time, um, you know, to do your work for your courses or your job. Um, you know, work and family tasks are sometimes not separated. Uh, you know, if you've got, you know, a family at home, sometimes uh, you might have kids, you know, kind of screaming in the background while you're trying to get some work done. And sometimes you kind of got to, you know, uh, go to them, uh, make sure that they're either, you know, fed or, you know, sleeping, whatever. And then kind of while they're busy, then you kind of go back to your work at that point. So, uh, you know, government ordinances may restrict bi your uh, business um, and then homeowners insurance may not cover business related claims. So, I mean, if you are going to be running a business out of your home, I would definitely check with your insurance provider to kind of see, you know, if you do have inventory in the house, that sort of thing, is it covered? If not, you might have to take out a uh, separate insurance policy. And so some of the benefits of home-based businesses, uh, you have the ability to start your business immediately. Um, minimal startup capital is needed just because you're working out of your home. Uh, you don't have to worry about rent um, or excessive uh, setup charges. Uh, comfortable working conditions. Um, I mean, you can pretty much work in your pajamas. Uh, you're, you know, three feet away from your refrigerator, <laughs> so you've got uh, some good things going for you there. Uh, like I said, you can work in your pajamas, so you do have reduced wardrobe expenses. You know, you don't have to worry about wearing a suit every day uh, to the office. Uh, no commuting. So you're probably going to have a lot more time, especially I mean, if you do have a longer commute. Um, you know, tax benefits, you're going to be taxed at you know, a lower uh, rate just because you are a sole proprietor like we talked about in the last uh, chapter. Um, elimination of office politics. You don't have to worry about, you know, uh, worrying about making somebody mad you know, sucking up to somebody, you know, other employees, anything like that, and then uh, low risk for trial and error. So some of the downsides uh, associated with home-based businesses, um, it is difficult to establish your work habits. Um, limited support system, um, it's pretty much you, um, you know, it goes along with isolation. Like I said, it is just you and you're going to have to work on your own quite a bit. Uh, workspace be limited. Um, you know, maybe you don't have the convenience of having like a home office. Um, so maybe you're having to work, you know, on your kitchen counter, um, having to work, you know, in your living room, your bedroom, whatever it might be. Clients may be uncomfortable coming to your home. So if you are working as a consultant and you want to set up a meeting, uh, maybe it'd be a good idea to meet them like Starbucks or something instead of hey, like, hey, can you come by my home? Just because I mean, that might be a little bit weird, especially, you know, uh, you know, you got the dogs running around, maybe they're allergic to dogs or scared of them. Um, you know, zoning restrictions, just, you know, um, having a business in your home, sometimes that is, uh, you know, against the law, depending on where you uh, live. And then success is based 100% on your efforts. So like I said, it is completely on you. <clears throat> so do you think you're ready to work from home? Um, if I don't know the answer, I can figure it out on my own. Um, I'm hardworking, self-directed, um, and disciplined, I'm organized and can multitask. I don't mind working long hours or weekends. I regularly set up goals and measure progress. Um, I'm content being alone. I'm a great communicator and create relationships with people I've never met. Um, I'm productive on my own. And then my family and friends don't expect me to be available while working at home. So I would say if you can answer yes to all of these questions, then you're probably going to be just fine working at home. If you're running into issues with that, then, you know, maybe working from home isn't the best idea. So a lot of the things, um, you know, people working from home, it is an online business. So online sales have reached over $381 billion in 2016, uh, about 8% of uh, all retail sales. And that number is just getting higher by the year. So Forrester Research predicts online sales to reach $500 billion by 2020. So boosting your business uh, online presence. So uh, planning what to publish and uh, on the proper platform. I know social media planning is a huge thing right now. Whether you're, you're on Facebook, Twitter, uh, you know Instagram, um, you know interact with your followers. People love a good social media presence. Uh, link your social media contact with your company website. Uh, look out for opportunities, and then uh, remember other forms of marketing as well. So encouraging entrepreneurship, uh, what a government can do. Um, Immigration Act passed in 1990 created a category for investor visas that encourage entrepreneurs to come to the U.S. Um, enterprise zones 
is specific geographic areas to which governments try to attract private businesses um, investment by offering lower taxes and other government support. And then you've got incubators, um, which are centers that offer new businesses, low cost offices with basic business services. Um, so, you know, incubators such as this one in Washington, D.C. offers new business, low cost offices uh, with basic business uh, services uh, such as accounting, legal advice, uh, secretarial help. Uh, do you have such incubators in your area? I know here in Springfield we do. Um, the big one coming to mind would be Innovate Springfield. Uh, which has, you know, their presence downtown. UIS just got involved with him, um, I think it was a little over a year ago, almost two years ago now. Um, the Innovate Springfield um, and UIS have had that partnership, and you can go to them with your ideas, and uh, they can help you work it through. Uh, one of my old professors, Bruce Summers, he's very active with uh, Innovate Springfield from UIS. So you can always go into him. He's an angel investor, knows a lot about business, um, and he um, is very much involved with just becoming an entrepreneur uh, just because he's been an entrepreneur uh, pretty much his entire life. So, um, you know, if you are thinking about going to UIS, um, you know, after Lincoln Land, I would definitely look up Bruce Summers uh, for like entrepreneurial, uh, you know, classes. Uh, small uh, versus big businesses. So small businesses, um, a business that is independently owned and operated and not dominant in its field of operation and meets certain standards of size uh, set by the Small Business Administration in terms of employees or annual receipts, kind of like what we talked about in Chapter 1, a small business is anything that's 500 people or less. Uh, businesses are small in relation to other businesses in their industries. So small business statistics, um, there are uh, 28 million small businesses in the U.S., um, all of uh, non-farm businesses in the U.S., almost 97% are considered small. Uh, small businesses account for over 50% of the GDP. Nearly 600,000 businesses are started uh, every year. Small businesses have generated 65% of new jobs since 1995. Uh, small businesses employ about half of the private uh, sector employees, and about 80% of U.S. workers' first jobs were in small business. So as you can see, you know, small businesses play a vital role in the U.S. economy. So it's really important that we continue to have entrepreneurs and small businesses. Um, importance of small businesses, you have more personal customer service. You know, people to you know, able to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. They're not going to get, you know, 1-800 number and talk to 10 different people. Um, you do have the ability to respond quickly to opportunities. Um, success and failure. Uh, business failures are lower than uh, the reports because owners closing a business uh, to start another um, is reported as a failure. Uh, changing forms of ownership is also reported as a failure. And then retirement is reported as a failure. So take those all into consideration. So maybe the failure rate isn't as high uh, when it comes to small businesses. So um, look at these, you know, famous small businesses here um, that ended up coming back and becoming really big businesses. So Walt Disney, um, first film company that went bankrupt. Uh, Henry Ford had uh, his first two car companies had failed before he uh, came up with uh, Ford. Uh, Anita Roddick, she had uh, two funeral homes opposed the body shop. Uh, Tommy Hilfiger, his first store went bankrupt. Milton Hershey, um, his first confectionery failed. And then H.J. Hines Company went bankrupt six years after the start. So all of these individuals, they all bounced back. They were all able to prosper later on. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to have a little adversity to start out with. So here's some of the causes of a small business failure. Um, you know, plunging in without uh, first testing the waters on a small scale. Uh, you know, starting with uh, too little capital. Starting with too much capital and being careless in its use. Uh, you know, going into business with little or no experience, attempting to do too much business with too little capital, uh, you know, buying too much on credit. <clears throat> I know um, I had a professor in college tell me about how he had a friend who started a business back in the 1990s, and he started it all with credit cards. He had about 10 different credit cards. He maxed them all out. They were all on super uh, cheaper interest rates, and he was able to uh, you know get his business up and running and to pay down the credit cards. Um, there were actually quite a few people who were doing this for a long time. There's still people who are still trying to do it. Um, 
<clears throat> sometimes it doesn't work out for the best and then the problem with that is it comes back on you because you are a sole proprietor and those credit cards are in you uh your name as the consumer so uh you'll have to file for bankruptcy and yeah you kind of get yourself um behind the eight ball from a early point so i wouldn't recommend doing that um if you are wanting to start out with a business um <clears throat> some of the other ones here not understanding businesses cycles uh, forgetting about taxes, insurance, and other costs of doing businesses, and then mistaking the freedom of being in business for oneself, uh, for the liberty to work or not, according to whim. So situations for small business success. Um, you know, the customer requires a lot of personal attention, um, as in the salon. Uh, product is not uh, easily made by mass uh, production techniques. Um, sales are not large enough to appeal to a large firm. Uh, the neighborhood is not attractive uh, because of crime or poverty. You know, a large business sells a franchise operation to local buyer works. Uh, the owner pays attention to new competitors, and then uh, the business is in a growth industry such as, you know, computer services or web design. So some of the things you can do as a small business, you can learn from others. So investigate your local, uh, you know, in your local colleges or classes on small businesses and entrepreneurship. Uh, you know, you can talk to me, you can talk to other professors, um, talk to and work for uh, successful local entrepreneurs, uh, you know, get some experience, gain three years of experience in a field, and then maybe kind of go out on your own from there. Uh, start, a start a small time, small business um, as you work in someplace else. Uh, take over a successful firm, um, serve as an apprentice or eventually take over um, once the owner steps down. So some major business functions here, um, you know, you've got your planning, financing, uh, knowing customers, managing employees, and then keeping records. So, I mean, it all starts out with, uh, you know, your planning. So business plan, um, just a detailed written statement that describes the nature of the business, uh, you know, your target markets, who you're trying to go after, who you're trying to sell to, the advantages um, the business will uh, have in relation to competition uh, and the resources and qualifications of the owners. Uh, business plan forces potential owners to be specific about what they will offer, uh, and then a business plan is uh, mandatory for uh, talking with bankers or investors. So writing a business plan, um, a good plan takes a long time to prepare. Uh, a good executive summary catches interest and tempts um, potential investors to read on. Uh, getting the plan into the right hands is almost as important as getting the right information in it. So what to consider before starting a family business? <clears throat> so I talked about this in the last chapter about, you know, probably not recommending starting a family business. If you do go into it, I mean, definitely follow the guidelines where, you know, clarify expectations. What is each person going to contribute? What are their role going to be? Discuss work family boundaries. Um, you know, what is the line that separates work from personal relationships? Uh, develop good communication, agree about types of decisions you'll make jointly or on your own, uh, clarify long-term intentions, discuss how long everyone will work full-time and goals for the business, uh, prepare for problems such as family troubles will get mixed in with business, uh, and then have an escape plan or have a plan B. Uh, financing your small business. So um, sources of capital, we have you know personal savings if you've saved up uh, for your business, uh, going to family, uh, once again, I probably wouldn't recommend going to uh, family members um, and asking for money just because um, if you do get behind on your bills or, you know, if the business isn't taken off quite like uh, you thought it was, going to family members and letting them know you don't have your their money back, uh, that can be a really difficult conversation to have, and that's created a lot of rifts over the years. Um, you know, going to business associates that you're currently working with, um, you know, banks and other financial institutions, uh, government agencies, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, angel investors, um, and venture capitalists. So uh, venture capitalists are individuals or companies that invest in new businesses in exchange for partial ownership um, of those companies. Angel investors is kind of like the same, um, you know, along the same lines of that. Angel investors are a little more smaller scale. Uh, they're willing to invest into a company either for, you know, some of the portion back uh, you know, some sort of like interest rate on it, um, or you know, being able to be uh, part of the ownership as the business goes along. So, uh, getting cash when financing um, isn't an option. Um, so, <clears throat> get close to your customers, uh, make clients pay upfront. 
outsource, outsource tasks on the cheap, um, get in front of customers quickly, become an expert on something, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help and be patient. So when it comes to financing, um, continued um, community development financial institutions, um, CDFIs are uh, playing a big role in the economy, economic recovery. Only 1% of loans were not paid back in the last 30 years. And then CDFIs provide uh, business uh, counseling as well as loans. So the SBA or the Small Business Administration, we have one here in Springfield. Um, it's a U.S. government agency that advises and assists small businesses, providing management training and financial advice and loans. Um, SBA started a microloan program in 1991 that provides a very small loans to small business owners. Um, the program judges worthiness based on the borrower's integrity and soundness of their business ideas. So, I mean, the biggest thing with the SBA is um, if you do have a business idea and you're wanting to uh, you know, see it through and you need help, you can go to them um, for advice, and they're also uh, able to help you obtain loans um, through financial institutions. So I know through SAFQ, I know uh, you know quite a few of the uh, um, borrowers that we have have gone through the SBA and uh, you know obtained either advice or you know um, SBA told them to come to SAFQ to help out um, when ob obtaining a loan. So uh, definitely a great organization. If you're serious about starting a small business, I would reach out to them. So a small business investment company, um, a program through which uh, private investment companies licensed by the SBA lend money to small businesses. So an SBIC um, must have a minimum of $5 million, um, in capital and can borrow up to $2 um, from the SBA for each $1 of capital it has. And then the SBICs are able to identify a business's trouble spots early, giving entrepreneurs advice in some uh, cases rescheduling loan payments. We've got the Small Business Development Centers. Um, they're funded jointly by the federal government and individual states. Um, SBDCs are able to evaluate the feasibility of your idea, develop your business plan, and complete your funding application for no charge. So the SBA may provide the following types of financial assistance, um, guaranteed loans, microloans, um, Export Express. Um, we've got community adjustment and investment programs. Um, Pollution control loans, uh, 504 certified development loans, and then CAP line loans. <laughs> so knowing your customers, um, you know your target market. Um, that's going to be the people with unsatisfied uh, wants and needs who have both resources and willingness to buy. Set out to fill the market's needs by offering top quality and great service at a fair price. And then one of the great advantages of small business is the ability to know the market and quickly adapt to the market's needs. So, I mean, whenever you're identifying the market, whether it's, you know, you're wanting to sell to a certain age group, a certain, uh, you know, race group, you know, income group, I mean, all of these factor into your target market. So managing your employees, um, you know, hiring, training, motivating employees is critical. Uh, employees of small companies are often more satisfied with their jobs because they feel challenged and respected. And then entrepreneurs best serve themselves and the business if they recruit and groom employees for management positions. So a good accountant can help in um, deciding whether to buy or lease equipment, deciding whether to own or rent a building, tax planning, financial forecasting, choosing sources of financing, and writing requests for funds. I would say an accountant um, is probably the first person that you would meet with if you're getting serious about a business um, just because they're going to be able to help you out a ton with uh, like taxes and just kind of helping you along the way. So uh, a good accountant is going to probably cost you um, a little bit of money, but at the same time, it's going to save you from a lot of headaches, especially if you're not well-versed in accounting. Um, owners need to outsize, uh, outside consulting advice early in the process. Um, small and medium-sized firms cannot afford to hire experts as employees, um, so a competent lawyer can help along uh, with an accountant, so I mean they can help out with leases, contracts, partnership agreements, protection against liabilities. Um, you know, this is another thing. It definitely a good idea to get a lawyer um, on the books, um, just because if you do run into legal issues, you can always go to your lawyer, um, and they're always thinking about things that you're probably never going to think about, um, just for your own protection. Um, 
<clears throat> marketing decisions need to be made long before introducing a product or opening a store. So a marketing research study can help you determine you know, where to locate, whom to select as your target market, what is an effective strategy for reaching the market, you know, where to locate. I mean, that's the you know a really, really big thing. Um, you know, <clears throat> when you think about Springfield, you want to be in a highly visible area. So when you look down the lines of like, uh, you know, look, having a storefront along like Veterans Parkway or even Wabash, Dirksen, I mean, all of those roads are very busy roads. Um, now, storefronts on those roads are going to cost you a little bit more, but you're going to have a lot of visibility just because the amount of cars and the amount of traffic that's going by those areas uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So a commercial loan officer can also help you. Um, they can design an accessible business plan, give financial advice, uh, lend money. Um, I've done a little bit with commercial loan. Um, lending and I would say as far as designing an acceptable business plan they're not going to help you too much um, that's pretty much on you and going to the SBA um, they might give you some feedback as to you know hey I need this um, out of you or I need that that sort of thing they will give a little bit of a financial advice but it's mainly going to be kind of based on what they need to see for them to approve the loan and then obviously you're hoping to obtain the money and that's what they're going to use they're going to lend the money um, an insurance agent can also help you know, you know, risks associated with the business, how to cover risk with insurance, um, how to prevent risks with safety devices. I would say, you know, talk to your attorney first to see if you're big enough to necessarily need an insurance agent at that point, um, or talk to your account and that sort of thing. That might be kind of like your next phase um, in getting in touch with an insurance agent. And then service corps or retired executives, uh, more than 11,000 volunteers from industry, trade associations, and education who counsel small businesses at no cost. So Diane Harrison and Cynthia Clark, founders and owner of uh, Copacity, uh, worked with SCORE Mentor to develop their company. The mentor advised them about financing uh, investor relations, sales and marketing, human resources, operations, organizational planning. Uh, what was the price tag for all of this uh, value advice? It was zero. So I would say, you know, definitely <clears throat> use those resources that you have out there available to you. Um, you know, don't be afraid um, to, you know, to ask a lot of questions. Go to your SBA office ask them about advice, uh, definitely get a mentor or talk to somebody who is an entrepreneur already um, to get advice from them, kind of what they went through. Uh, you know, if you're serious about starting up a business, uh, you know, maybe even set up an appointment with an accountant from the start, kind of see, you, you know, what they need to see on their end um, as far as just, you know, documentation from the start, you know, if especially if you're going to be spending money from the start on your business, just document it on that and see how much of it can be tax deductible and um, how you can run it as a loss then that way you're not getting taxed on it at the end of the year. Um, so small and medium-sized businesses accounted for 99% of recent export growth. So some of the advantages of global trade for small businesses, um, overseas buyers uh, enjoy dealing with individuals. Uh, small companies can usually begin shipping much faster. Um, they provide a wide variety of suppliers and then give more personal uh, service attention. I mean, a couple of the things to look out there. Um, I just recently bought a uh, foam case. Um, it was from a, a small organ, or it was from a small supplier in uh, California. Um, it was called Jimmy Case, and it's a pretty cool foam case on the back. It's got wood, um, but it also has kind of like a flexible uh, place where I can put like credit cards, Mastercard, something like that. Um, and uh, just kind of looking around like on their website and everything. I mean, they have you know a small global presence. So I mean, that's just kind of a great example of uh, you know kind of that. Um, they were able to ship really faster. They provided one-on-one -on -one support, um, and they definitely had that personal service and attention. So that's all I have for chapter six. We will see you guys next time in chapter seven.